A critical vulnerability was found on the IP address validation libraries on both Node.js and Python. This one is very interesting and this is something I didn't know about to be honest. This is the way you validate IP addresses. It's not easy because there's apparently more than one way to represent the same IP address. Who knew? How about we jump into it and discuss? Welcome to the Back in Engineering Show with your host, Jose Nasser. And guys, an IP address, this 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 four byte representation. Usually, how do we present it? We present it like it's a decimal point dot decimal dot decimal dot decimal. So maximum IP address is 255.255.255.255. And lowest one is 0000. zero, zero, zero because it's like it's a four byte right one byte is zero to 255 decimal so now if you think about it how do you parse this well you can say hey this is a, has to be a decimal if you send me a string that's supposed to be an ip address to validate it i just check if this is a decimal right apparently that's not the only way let me show you let's go <laughs> This is what we're going to discuss this. this. This is really, really, really critical. But let's go to Chrome here. And let me type in this. I'm going to type in, I'm going to type in 0177.0.0.1. Look at that. I passed in 0177, which if I would have received that, I would think this is the IP address 177.0.0.1. But look what Chrome, in this case, I, sorry, Brave, Parse this as 127.001, which is the loopback. So, apparently there is another format where you can represent IP addresses, and that's called octal, which is base 8. So, numbers from 0 to 8, uh, to 7 to be specific, 0 to 7, and you can specify that. And as long as the first leading 0 is 0, these four digits, the parser will treat this as an octal and it will convert it to a decimal in this case right so seven in this case seven times eight to the power zero which is one seven plus the second seven seven times eight to the power two which is 16 and then plus one times eight to the power two which is 16 and then sum the whole thing and you end up with 127 which is the loop back so you might say Hussein, saying what, what, what's the point of this why, why are you what are you getting it this is the bug actually with with python and netmask in node.js so if you have built a node.js app that accepts some sort of a url from the client there's many use cases for that like, let's say you want to have a custom authentication service like oauth and you want the user to supply their oauth service right so this way, they have to send you an actual URL or even an address and where where this is located, a domain name, right? If you do that, then your backend is supposed to make that request on behalf of the client. And there are, we know about these kind of attack that can happen as a result of exposing such functionality to the client by, by submitting URLs like server side request forgery. I talked about it right here if you want to learn more about it. But it's nasty because yeah, you intended for the client to query authentication services, but how do you know they are authentication services? The client, which is that attacker, can send you a request to query 127.0.0.1 slash admin going to your loop back admin interface where you're maintaining your web server or your a proxy or anything like that because most most critical infrastructure that we listen and have administration web interfaces listens to the loopback it never listens to any other interfaces it never exposes itself to the public right so when you listen to that it's it's you can only access it really from the same machine it just listens to the same machine right because it's a, it's a loopback right but if I sent you, if you expose this functionality and that you give me a URL, I can just pass in, hey, go to 127.0.0.1 slash admin. And that's bad, right? So we built in this knowledge as, as we grew mature, security aware in the back and said, okay, 
Hey, is this URL 127.001? Sorry, can't make that request. You're not allowed to uh, query internal resources. You, you sh only public stuff. So the attacker will say, share, because the attacker is in Boston. Say, share, all right? And the attacker will say, okay, all right. You won't let me query local resources. I'm going to send you another URL. I'm going to send you 0177.0.01. Hey, please send request to that. So your parser, your Python parser using the IP address package or the Node.js netmask is going to look at that, is going to try to parse it. And the parser is the bug. What the parser does is actually says, okay, 0177.0.0.1. Well, I'm going to strip the zero on the left. That is what it does. It is not what the IETF RFC says. If, it's, if there's a zero on the left, you should parse it as an octal, which converts into 127.0.0.1. But no, no. What they did, no JS. They actually strip the zero, which converts that IP address to what? 177.0.0.1. Now, you as the programmer on the back end says, hey, the, this guy's name is innocent. This guy just wants to connect to 177.0.0.1. Sounds legit. Let him pass. So they pass in, and eventually that string of 0, 7, 7, 0, 177 will eventually funnel into many components and go down to the low level which you call in the fetch request or your request library in python and at that point it will be validated correctly based on the standard and that will yield the actual intention behind the attacker which is hitting your 127.0.0.1 going to your admin interface uh essentially attacking you, uh, brute forcing you the admin, or if, if, you, if you don't have an admin password, that's even worse than just fetching all the nasty information that he, he can get his hand or her hand on. Nasty stuff, ain't it? Nasty. So they can bypass this and attack and execute a server-side request forgery, which I talked about many times on this channel. This one is one of the nastiest. Why? Because we have multiple representation of the same thing. So as a result, you lead into this old nasty stuff. Some, some parsers will strip zero, some parsers will evaluate it cor incorrectly, and you lead to inconsistent result, which lead to security. We've seen the same exact thing here. So let, let's credit the researchers here. Today, security researchers, Victor v Vial, Sick Codes, Nick Sahler, Kelly Kodos and John Jackson. Sorry, I butchered your names, guys. Uh, very thick Arabic accent, my friends. The vulnerability tracked as CVE 2021 28918 and more recently as CVE 2021 29418 concerns how Bit Nitmask handles mix format IP addresses. So it's it's when it when it comes to mix formats. <laughs> so even the first byte can have an octal and the second byte can be a decimal why are we even allowing such nastiness that's just oh my god oh sometimes we just complicate things and ipers can be represented in variety of formats why we shouldn't we shouldn't really just leave it as integers ipers should never be presented in multiple formats right again guys i talk this must have an history 100% there is a history behind it. There is a use case behind it. Those guys don't do anything without uh, actual representation. Like, I can do it as a binary, right? Why not? You can do it as a binary as well. That's another format, right? But yeah. Regardless, anything that reels to different semantics illustrated into different semantics by by two different components, which is the same thing, essentially, yields to security problems, which is what we saw here. Another example I can think of is uh, HTTP smuggling. And the way proxies and backends parses HTTP 1.1 requests. 
that's obviously was being fixed but for the longest time you can essentially send multiple content length headers on the http request and that header is used to tell the server the length of this request is hey this is a 20 byte request this is a 30 byte request and so on uh, this is obviously an http 1.1 because we use this we use this as a mechanism to determine the start and the end of the request because we use almost like a string parsing and this was being solved in http 2 by using actual headers we know the end of the and the beginning of streams and how do they uh, where, where a stream starts where the stream ends right where, where a request in a stream right and more moreover usually you can't send multiple requests in the same stream concurrently you have to wait for the for the response to come back so we we kind of trust these content length headers in, in http2 better but the problem with http11 and if you have a proxy and you got two content length how do you know which one is the correct one so the proxy is just um, <laughs> pick one <laughs> exactly pick one so the proxy will pick the first one node.js on the back end or python on the back end could pick the second one reading to inconsistent results and a result as a result the attacker could craft a malicious http request that that post to an internal url internally while a, a, a whole request will be treated in the proxy as an entire request but when it receives at the back end it will be segmented into two legitimate request the second one is the uh, essentially the uh, a query to go to an internal loopback interface right hitting some internal application and just that, like that you bypassed any proxy validations http smuggling is one of the nastiest and people are winning insane amount of money with http finding http smuggling bugs and uh, so those guys the security researchers have found this bug and ran with it like they, they just been testing python npm packages and now they just just yesterday may 1st uh, they released another bug in python founding a critical ip address validation in python so both python and node and i believe in the future more will come to fruition and they will gonna find more and more vulnerabilities guys what do you think about this to me if it was me i would just block not strip this this zero right and i believe when you read through this article i'm gonna reference it below at one point the author of the uh, python uh, ip address validation they weren't stripping it they were blocking they said hey if you have a zero in the beginning don't do that don't have a zero. doesn't there no there is no meaning of adding a zero and if they're often a number it doesn't mean anything so they were blocking these requests and for some reason they relaxed that by stripping it i don't know the additional details but there's always think about it, there's always a reason of anything happening there's no dump like this that's not cool people dumb before doing them because you don't know the whole story there is always a reason and almost always there is a good reason behind any change right so these security these these uh the, the authors of the library they stripped the zero for a reason the reason probably is forgotten right but yeah what do you guys think to me if i were building this i would block i would just hard error i would not attempt even or either hard error or actually doing the pr proper validation based on the rfc if i can do that proper validation based on the rfc which is the ietf original specification i will just error says hey uh, sorry i don't support octal i know i see you're passing a zero on in front of this i i, I see you you might meaning uh you might mean to to octal to octal your ip address but sorry i don't support octal because i just don't want to if you don't tell me that that's a beautiful way i love errors i love explicit nice errors that tells you hey we don't do this because of this just hey sometimes it's just easier better to explicitly error instead of silently swallowing errors and fixing things for the client a lot of people disagree with me on that one and, and that's fine because at the end of the day we there's use cases for both i i even put a, a poll the other day it's like 
would you rather throw an error or uh, silently swallow the error right and and return success to the user if you can fix it and there was like almost 50 50 so i don't think there is an answer to that but just at the end of the day it's a personal choice all right guys uh that was for me today i'm gonna see you in the next one you guys stay awesome goodbye